News. With Jim Redmond, Steve Scott, Tom Hyland, and the award-winning Channel 7 News Team. Good afternoon. I'm Bob Palmer, your regular reporter, Jim Redmond, who will be reporting in a moment from Loveland. One of the worst natural disasters in Colorado history occurred last night west of Loveland. Torrential rains east of Estes Park sent a wall of water down the Big Thompson Canyon between Estes Park and Loveland. The unofficial death toll is now 52, but officials fear that the number may be three or four times that great. An estimated 2,500 people were camping in the narrow canyon when water roared down upon them during the night. The daylight revealed hundreds of cabins, barns, cars, trucks, campers, and trailers in the river. Weather officials say 10 to 14 inches of rain fell in the area near Glen Haven and Drake, producing possibly the worst flood ever to hit the Big Thompson. Of those caught by the flood, many escaped by climbing the steep canyon walls. Others who tried to make it down the road were swept to their deaths. Highway 34, which skirted the river, was washed out for miles. In some areas, there is no indication that a highway ever existed. Rescue teams moved into the area during the night, and military helicopters began flying up the canyon at dawn today. At least 800 persons have been brought out during the day by land and air, many of them injured, all telling of the most horrible night of their lives. I live in Colorado, a state in the western U.S. known for the Rocky Mountains, and our annual snowfall. Yet the worst natural disaster in my state had nothing to do with snow but rain. The Big Thompson flood occurred on July 31, 1976, around the resort town of Estes Park. When the water finally receded, the death toll was 144 lives, not including livestock. In the wake of that disaster, significant studies were done in the area, especially in regard to the foundation of roads and highways. The walls of the roads that withstood the storm were those filled with concrete, in other words, they had a sure and strong foundation. In our lives, the question is not if the floods will come, but when. Sometimes we have advance notice, but usually not. Jesus stresses a strong foundation for such times, one built by not just hearing his words, but also by living out the gospel. Luke 6 verse 47. That practice is almost like pouring concrete into our lives. When the floods come, and they will, we can withstand because we've been well built. Verse 48. The absence of practice leaves our lives vulnerable to collapse and destruction. Verse 49. It's the difference between being wise and foolish. It's good to pause occasionally and do a little foundation assessment. Jesus will help us to fortify the weak places that we might stand strong in his power when the floods come. What weak spots need attention in your life? How might you work on them? Jesus, I want to be not just a hearer, but a doer as well. Give me the vision to see weak places in my foundation that need attention. And thank you for your promised presence when the floods do come.